Hi, this is David. Today we're talking about Azure Data Factory and source control repositories. Now, Azure Data Factory is a uh, tool for doing extract, transform, and load, um, pulling data out of one place, transforming it some way, pushing another thing, and having some workflow along the way. And most of the, the development you'll do will be in the browser. There's There are these wizards right here, and then there's also this thing over here where you can actually change some of your assets, pipelines and data sets and data flows and so on. Uh, but just because you're doing it in the browser and you're doing it through mostly a graphical interface or through these setting of properties, that doesn't mean that there isn't some code associated with it. There is. It's actually JSON code. So it's configuration as code. And because it's JSON, it can be saved to files and those files can be put into source control, which is important if you're doing any kind of continuous integration, continuous deployment, syncing with other developers, you want the ability to roll back. All the advantages of source control are available to you if you get those JSON files into a source control repository. And that's pretty easy to do uh, within Azure Data Factory. We've got this button here, set up code repository. Now I've already set up a an Azure Data Factory service in advance. If you want to learn how to do that, I've got a video on that. It's episode 18 of this series. Go ahead and watch that. But I've done that already. And I'm going to click on the set up code repository right here. And here I select what repository do I want to use? And right now the two options are Azure DevOps or GitHub. They're both pretty popular. So I'm going to select GitHub. I don't have a GitHub Enterprise account, but I do have a GitHub account. And the name of that account is my name. Once I type that in, then it goes out and finds that name, that account, and loads this drop down with all of my repositories. And I actually haven't set this one up now, so I need to go over to GitHub right now, and I need to create a new repository. So I'm going to go to my repositories and select new. And if you don't have a GitHub account, go to github.com and just create one. And right here, I'm going to type in uh, DG test ADF. That'll be the name of my repository. I don't need description, leave it as public. Everything is fine, except I have to have at least one file in here. That's a rule that ADF has to do this integration. It can't be completely empty. So I'm just going to stick a readme file on here. That's fine. Uh, I can go back later on and expand that readme file. It just puts a single word in that the title of the repository, but it's all set. Now I have a repository. Now I can come over here and I can, I'll have to probably retype this to refresh that list. And now I have DG test ADF right there in my list. And ask me some questions about this repository. What's my collaboration branch? I only have one branch. I just created it. It's a master branch. Where do I want to place the code? Do I want to put it in a subfolder? Maybe I have multiple ADF services and I want to put them all in the same repository and store each one in a different folder. In this case, I don't. I only have one, so I'll just leave it in the root folder. Um, do I want to import existing data factory resources into the repository? I do. I, I created one right before I recorded this video. I want to make sure that gets pushed in. Um, and everything else is this, this just defaults are fine right here. I'll click on save. And in a few seconds, it's all saved right here. So what I can do is go over to my source control repository and refresh it. And there we go. There's my pipeline right here. And if I open it up, you'll see that it is in fact a JSON file, with all of the configuration in it. And I've got things like data sets and linked services, all those things that are part of my Azure Data Factory assets. They've all been pushed into here. And that's pretty nice. Now, one other really nice thing is that if I make any changes, so for example, if I come in here to my pipeline and I change the name of this here, to something like that and save it. And publish it. Really any change at all. I made a minor change just for demonstration purposes. But I've made a small change here. And what will happen is because I've already set this link with GitHub, if I come back over to my repository and refresh it again, you'll notice that 
this pipeline was updated 25 seconds ago. More recently, you can see what that change was. Change it from that name to that name within the pipeline. So not only have I pushed all of my current code into GitHub, but I've also set up a link so any future changes will automatically be pushed into GitHub. And if this is a problem with colliding with production or colliding with other developers, you can set up other branches and not commit directly to the master branch. Instead, commit to your own branch and then uh, have some other process where you merge them later, either automatically or manually. And now you can do this as part of your continuous deployment. You'll have a record of all changes that are made, you have the history of that, and you could roll back if you want to. All the advantages of source control are available to you. If you want to know more about this, actually, if you'd like to just read it, I have a blog post explaining step-by-step -step with screenshots how to do that. Just go to my blog, davidgr.com, and search for linking an Azure Data Factory to a GitHub repository, and you'll see all of that information right here. This is David. Thank you for watching.